And we're here at Joe Kelly Radio. I'm really excited because our next guest who I've known, I was thinking about this before, you know, we were talking. I've known you close to 25 years, right? No. You, no? Oh, no, I okay. haven't been in New York that long, no. Okay. I've known you a long time. Uh, I think we met like 15 years ago about like in maybe 2006, 2007. Like that's when I started yeah. playing out and that's when I started playing out in 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 New York and and in the surrounding areas. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's it's quite a while. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. And uh he's always been supportive of our various shows we've had. His name is Jan Close, by the way. You you know him uh performances in our studios at DOF and uh all sorts of things and he's yes. extremely busy right now because just a little while ago, released his seventh studio record, Surrender, and uh, you're out there promoting it. So let's talk about it. Seventh, and right after the, the crazy pandemic, what, what uh, went into this record? That's what went into it. Oh, yeah. you know, it was, <laughs> we made an album during, uh, during the craziest of times, but many people did. I'm not the only one. And uh, but, you know, it was nevertheless quite challenging. You know, I one of the funny stories about it um, is that the bassist on Surrender on my new album, his name is Max Sternlicht. I actually only met him two months ago for the first time. Oh, really? OK. He played all of his bass parts in remotely. He lives in Nashville in Tennessee, and he did all of his bass parts remotely. And I only met him two months ago for the first time. You know? So how is he playing in person as opposed to online? I actually haven't seen him play in person, you know? He could oh, be okay. live. He could be making right. this all up. That's he right, yeah. It might not have been him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's he, he was very sweet. I, I really liked him, you know? Like, we, we uh, it was it was really nice. I wish he could, you know, we, we wanted to see if he was going to be able to play the live shows that we have right now. So we have several album release shows coming up in the Northeast in, in the United States. And um, he, but he couldn't do it, you know? So I have, um, I have my, my regular bassist, Sam Weber, who he's been playing in my band for a long time now, like 10 years, I think. And um, I have a new drummer. His name is Pedro Mila. He's, he's a Brazilian. He's fantastic. Okay. And then I have Marcus Dembinski, who is the producer of the of the album of Surrender, and he's my music director as well. So he's he's playing guitar, electric guitar, um, keys, running any tracks, singing backup vocals. He's like a jack of all trades. That one. So yeah, it's going to be uh, yeah. the shows are going to be great, and the band is is hot. They're very good. Yeah, so let, let's go over the immediate schedule. I know you're heading out to Ohio to do an in-studio performance interview. WRUW, right? Yeah, that's on. Yeah. That's this week. Yeah, I'm in right. Ohio for two shows, for the Live from Cleveland, that's on WRUW. And on Friday, I'm in Youngstown, my old stomping grounds where I went to, to college and oh, playing okay. at a soap gallery there. Yeah. And then back into Fairfield, Connecticut, where I grew up in the radio station yes. for 30 something years. And and you played the Las Vegas Lounge, right? Next to where you're playing. Oh, that was the name of that place. Yeah, I was yeah. I the name of that Las two different, Vegas. Two different locations. I think they have a newer spot, which is bigger and nicer, I guess. Yeah, I remember that spot. I, Chris and I, Chris Maroff, my then bass, bassist. That's right, yeah. Yeah, really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was that was when we were just kids starting out. Yeah. I was playing for playing coffee, coffee and jars. tip jars. <laughs> and totally. People talking over the music, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. They still do that, but you know, you could you can't you can't tell people what to do, you know. Yeah. It's the people in the audience that do that now. So oh, if there's okay. talking in the crowd, it's always best when you get the people that are standing next to those the noisy people that are talking. Over the over the quiet moment in the music, if they say something directly rather than you, you know, going right. like, you know, then then people <laughs> just take it the wrong way. So how disconcerting as a performer with the cell phones and people during a show is that for you? Is it at all or? Uh, well, it's that's never nice. Honestly, it, it always sucks. You know, if you if you feel like because you're you know 
this is so funny because it's a Prince reference. You, you, you and I are both huge Prince fans. Right. And uh, people would ask Prince, what do you think about when you're playing? You probably know the answer to this already. Right. And he would answer, I don't think I'm listening. <laughs> so, yeah. and that's basically what I do. You know, I, I stand, I'm standing up there, I'm playing, but I'm listening and I'm watching to everything that's going on around me. And I'm taking in what's happening in front of me with the audience. And so when there is these very quiet moments in a song or, you know, and all of a sudden you hear, you know, donk or ah! <laughs> you know, from the theater, right. it is distracting. You know, it right. does, it does make you sort of like get out of your zone and your that moment, you know, that feels that, that sort of the bliss moment, you know, that, that as a performer that we all go for is that, 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 that connection moment, you know, where you feel like you're connected to everything around you and the universe and you know the 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 music just sort of like flows through you and you get on this almost like a high mm -hmm. you know a performance high and uh so yeah that, that it's always unpleasant but you know you always hope that you have a, a captive audience in front of you well you know you brought up the prince reference the last time i saw prince was uh end of december 2013 in, in at uh mohegan sun arena in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and in front of me was a guy for the whole concert was watching uh, Sunday Night Football. Mm -hmm. During the concert, either he had a big bet on it or was just a fan, but I said, <laughs> wow, that's, this is really rough. <laughs> so that's, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. You pay that's... like a hundred bucks to see like a legendary performer and you're watching a football game. <laughs> and I mean, 2013, that was... When did Prince pass? 2016? Yeah, 2016. So this was yeah. like, he had the Third Eye Girl for certain songs, yeah. and then, then he would bring, you know, an 11-piece horn section to mix in with that. So, wow. yeah. But those were the yeah. days, yeah. So, yeah, wow. Yeah, live yeah. music by real musicians. That's, That's right, what we yeah. Did. Real music by real musicians. There's no Memorex with Jan Close, who's our special guest here, Joe Kelly Radio. And um, I touched a little bit on the uh, album release party in Connecticut, which is going to be in, in a week or so, uh, at the Community Theater, Sacred Heart University's Community Theater in Fairfield. May 4th. Tell us about that night. Yeah, May 4th. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful theater. If you haven't been there, um, it's it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's big. It's I right. think it's four seats. Yeah, you, when I was a kid, it was two theaters, and they must have knocked down a wall and made it big, like you said. It's, it's stunning. It's a really right. beautiful space. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're all very excited about this, um, and we are going to have. So it'll be my band. It'll be a five. will be a five piece. Um, Myself, plus Marcus Dembinski, who I mentioned already, my music director, um, on keys, guitar, tracks, uh, drummer Pedro Mila, bassist Sam Weber, and a singer named Randy Driscoll. Okay. Joining us, also as a special guest. And then we have, I think, about 40 or so dancers from wow. the Lee Lund studio joining us on stage for a few of the songs so it's going to be uh it's going to be something else wow so yeah you're always doing like in a bringing in different influences in the art that's 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 really i mean when you were doing stuff with yoel and yeah yeah so that it's is always a, that's great another stuff. project that's still going too so we 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 are that we're we're revisiting that that uh, that show as well Oh, okay, great. Where where is he now, Yoel? Yoel is in Boston. He's okay, at so he was also Boston there. University. Yeah, he's a professor there. A oh, choreographer. Okay. That's my brother's alma mater. Yeah. Is it? And Howard Stearns too. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, say hi to Yoel. Definitely. I will. I'll tell him. I'm right. glad you remember. That's nice. Oh yeah. And um, you just came back from Africa, South Africa which you spent a lot of time growing up there. What was going on in South Africa? Uh, well, I was on tour with the new record and um, did several shows, did Cape Town, Durban, uh, or Underberg, which is just west of 
of Durban. It's a big festival called Splashy Fen that mm -hmm. I played for the first time. That was amazing. And, and Johannesburg and uh, lots of media. I must have done like a dozen interviews, TV, radio, um, two writing sessions, one, pr one production session. It was crazy busy. It was very good. It was a very good time. And uh, so now I'm working on um, a new track with a, a, uh, a DJ producer uh, there who lives in Cape Town, DJ Kosher. His name is DJ Kosher. Oh, okay. He's very well known there. He's like a household name. Everybody knows him. And so we're working on a new track together. That's going to be a single that's going to, uh, that's his single that's going to feature me. And uh, yeah, it was, it was wonderful. You know, um, I still have family there. I, uh, I, I love the, the energy of that country. You know, it has a lot of political, a lot of problems, a lot, a lot of challenges, but uh, people are um, e extremely resilient there. And um, it's wonderful to see, you know, you, you, you really remember how good you have it here, you know, and how people complain here on a very high yeah, level. Right. <laughs> and yeah, it's, uh, a, it's always interesting. Like yeah. you grew up in a different country and I mean, you've been in Germany as well and, you know, like you mentioned, the conversation. And then, you know, if you really think back, exactly like you said, we should be grateful over here for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. well, what are some things that uh, we take for granted here that you see, for instance, in South Africa that they don't have? Um, well, I, I think we take uh, uh, the personal safety. Um, there's a lot of crime. You have to be very careful. You have to be vigilant to uh you know to be aware of what of your surroundings um i mean not that we don't have crime here you know we do have we do have challenges there as well but you know i can i live in new york city and i can walk out of the street at night and walk around and you know the likelihood of something happening to me is relatively small right. um you know we have uh, food at every corner uh, we have uh, access to electricity and uh, uh, the internet mm -hmm. uh, at all times, which is not always the case in South Africa. Um, and also, I mean, but, but one of the things that you that you do realize is that this in South Africa, especially the you know the, this divide between rich and poor is ex extreme, very extreme. So you have. Uh, uh, very poor areas, literally right next to very wealthy ones, or middle class, I suppose you know if you, if you want to call it that. Uh, so the contrast is is much more stark than it is here. But you've you've got to work with all different kinds of styles. I mean, you've done records with musicians from there, and yeah, um, that, that that was the previous record, right? Yeah, that was in tandem. So in tandem yeah. had uh, lots of South African musicians on it, lots of South African stars, mm -hmm. and uh, and I had actually the the Johannesburg show that only happened a week ago. Yeah, what day is today? <laughs> I'm still I think it's Monday. But... Yeah, so just a little over a week ago, you know, I I played in Johannesburg and I had uh, the same drummer that's on in tandem, uh, Legan Breeder, Legan Starchild. He calls himself Legan Starchild. He's fantastic. Like he's the house drummer of Idols South Africa, which is their American idol. And uh, a new bassist who, uh, the Sakile Nkosi, who played on, on In Tandem. He's in Europe. He was on tour. So um, Legan brought in uh, this kid who's, uh, his name is Tendai uh, Shoko, Tendai Shocks. He calls himself Shocks with two X's. And he was incredible, you know, bassist. I mean, the you know, you'd sing him the the idea or the line of the of the the bass line. You know, like correcting because I I do a lot by singing. You know, I communicate a lot by, you know, rather than playing, I communicate a lot by by singing notes out loud or parts out loud. And uh, he responded to immediately within seconds. You know, he had the line down. You know, and it was right. it, it's great to be around that that kind of level of talent. You know, that you can speak so quickly and clearly, too, and then. 
Ezra Erasmus, uh, that's his real name, mm -hmm. is the uh, the keyboardist, who is also the keyboardist on In Tandem. He was our keyboardist. And then Tamara Day, who was a singer, a guest singer on the record as well. Uh, she was she joined us as well. So it was mostly the the same band from from In Tandem, which was very cool. You know, it was a great and we we performed at the at the exact location where we made the record. So oh, OK, it was it was cool. Yeah, nice, nice to go back home. And uh, how about yeah. with the seven records? Yeah, like, that's a lot to pick from to, to get to a, you know, a set list like that. And you're mm -hmm. working with different musicians. How, how have you been narrowing it down? And have you thrown surprises to uh, your current band in the middle of a so uh, show? Oh, I mean, you know, it's very structured, you know, like that's one of the things that that does get more difficult, you know, um, sort of going into like the improv improvisational sections of the show, which which exists and which are important to me, um, are planned, mm -hmm. you know, because we have to structure them like that. I mean, things no, still happen. I mean, you never know. Like during the show in Johannesburg, there was a power outage in the middle of the set. Oh, wow. <laughs> it just went, whoosh, everything just went dark. Wow. And uh, in the emergency lights come on, you know. So I, and it didn't come on again right away. So I said, you know what, you guys want to hear a, an acoustic song? And the, the place was the right size that I could, I could reach, you know, with uh, just an acoustic and vocal. And so I played, uh, I played a Tim Buckley song. I played Song to the Siren and um, I played one from, from, the, from the new album called Stay the Same. And then the power came back on and we were able to continue with the show. But uh yeah you know it it's uh it's tricky it, it you don't realize um i mean you always kind of want to build to that point in in a career where you have that much music to choose from so that you can really pick the most popular ones the best songs the ones you enjoy playing the most because that's another thing you know i don't always enjoy playing the songs that may be like a fan favorite you know i right. i generally my own favorites in addition to those uh, but uh, it it does give you more of a pool to source from, which is which is great. Um, and but you do have to be more picky, you know. You have to say, you know, not not this one this time. This we don't have time to do it. You know, we have time for uh, you know um, fifteen, sixteen songs in a in a show because you know, then you have to, you have to choose, you know, I mean, like, you know, I know we talk about Prince a lot, you know, right. but I get, I, what I always loved about him is, is he would do these like mini medleys, you know, of songs. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I, I enjoyed that, but then there was a part of me that thought, oh, you know, I really want to hear the full song. Yeah. Especially you know? one of but I loved yeah. how he would cycle through them. And, and it was sort of revealing to me because you could also sense how similar some of the songs are and how they use very similar uh, themes and, and structures and hooks and, and, um, and approaches really, you know, and, and like, I think it's on, um, I mean, I should be talking about myself, but I'd rather, my, rather talk about someone else. Uh, I think it's on, I think it's sign of the times. Like the only other song on the live movie of sign of the times that's from a different album is, Little Red Corvette, I think. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's like a little segue. Yeah. 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 And uh, it, it's beautiful. It's like a cool little moment of, and we're doing something similar with the new show. You know, it's mostly songs from Surrender from the new album and from In Tandem, which has really developed a life of its own. And uh, and then there's like one song from Reverie, you know, that we're, right. we're throwing. In. So no, uh, no black box. Uh... Yeah. Revisit? Pardon? No no black box revisit. Oh, uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> see. I'm going way, happening. way back. You yeah. <laughs> I know that was my first EP that I did in New York in 2004. You know, that was um that was my like kickoff into into um the world of of you know that's that's how really when things became serious and and I and I started to see like, oh okay, maybe maybe I Maybe I should be doing this, yeah. you know. I should pursuing be pursuing a career. And, and you choose like the most uh, competitive city to to start your musical career <laughs> in the states, right? No. 
But you're I know. still there. You're still there. So that I'm you still here. There. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still here. And uh, somehow, you know, somehow have, have made a career out of it. In the toughest of times, really, when I think about it. And even now, it's like you just think, could it get any worse? And it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> you know, you have like radio is is sort of has a really uh, um it's really hard to find like how do you how do you promote music you know and yeah but I, what we're finding is you know because i have a great team of people is we got to give uh, it up to ann layton yeah and ann yeah ann who i've been working with forever you know and uh, off and on you know i mean like there were times when we took breaks and and uh we've come back to it and so forth but uh it really you know friendships and relationships in this business should then you need to make them last. You know why? Because um, it it's important to work with people that that care about what you do. You know, and that know that understand who you are as an artist. And um, but I think it's difficult to find people like that. You know, and I found people like that in in Germany and in the UK and in South Africa, especially and here and now Brazil. I have a new promoter I just started working with in Brazil. You know, and and I, I tell this to my, I, I coach voice. I work with singers now and I started producing myself. And I tell, you know, people that are starting out or in young talent um, at, at every level, really, you know, the, the, your friendships and your relationships with people, not, they're not all going to last. <laughs> You're going right. to have falling outs with some people. Right. And sometimes you have a falling out and then you reconnect. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's basically like a marriage with, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of people, you know, because right, right. it's intimate and it's it's um, it's very uh, uh, it goes very deep because it's art, because it's music. It's it's your it's your soul. You know, you're not just. Uh, um, but, I you know, I, I say this and, and then I think people that build cars. They they care about if they care about their work or clean houses or whatever, you know, write books, you know, they, if they care about it, there's going to be a lot of passion that mm -hmm. they put into it, you know, whatever it is. And I think that's what we have to do. I think um, we have to nurture our relationships. Look at you and I, we've known each other for, you know, 15 plus years. Right, right. I mean, I don't even remember how we met. I think you, did you? We were uh, playing your music I, and then you came the and supported, I did like a TV show. I four TV shows and you came down and then we just started, you've been on the show numerous times. We got, we're going to make the box set of young close performances on our <laughs> show. We, we could do it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, it's been a while. It's, it's, it's definitely been a while. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, it's, yeah. it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Young close for those listening to the audience, his name is J A N N K L O S E.com. And Surrender is the latest CD, his seventh. And it's really cool. It's available on vinyl, right? As well. Yes, we do, we got vinyl for the first time. Yeah. So vinyl CD, MP3s, you can go to your shop section on, on your website. T-shirts. Got T-shirts. T-shirts, right? Yeah. You know, I had a T-shirt on today with your Heart Peace logo. Not, not your oh. shirt, but I had it and I said, I was going to wear it as a joke, but all you would have been seeing was the top of it. But yeah, that that's a that was a cool logo you did there. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So another thing people should really check out are, are a lot of your videos because you're an independent artist, yet you've released some incredibly high quality uh, videos. Uh, you can go on your site and YouTube and everything. What, what's the latest? The latest video, of course, is uh, Surrender, right? The single. Yeah, Surrender is the newest one that just came out. And uh, it's, um, if I can brag a little bit, it's already approaching 100,000 views in like Ooh. three weeks. Or so. Yeah. so that's pretty good. We're pretty happy about that. Um, and yeah, the you know, I, I work very closely with my management or slash label, Honey Rose Records on it, Maury Levovitz. He, you know, he, he really likes the visual aspect and so do I. Mm -hmm. So the, and in fact, the dancers I was talking about earlier are the dancers from those videos, from Sugar Mai and from Flesh and Blood. Oh, okay. And 
those are the dancers that are going to be on stage with us uh, May 4th at the Sacred Heart University Community Theater. Yeah, it's uh, Unqua Road right next to uh, the Post Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. So, so the fact that we can, you know, I mean, I feel very lucky because not only do I have the producer of the record, Marcus Dembinski, on stage with me, who knows the music better than I do, it seems sometimes, really, and plus the dancers from the video, you know, so it really, it, it feels special that that we get to do it like this mm -hmm. with everybody that, you know, this team that we've built, you know, and it takes a village and it it, it really does. And and uh, so I, I feel very lucky. Yeah, it's, it's going to be nice. Bring some extra money there, of course, because uh, the CDs, vinyl shirts, everything will be there. And you'll get to meet yeah. Jan, I'm sure. Uh, yes, yeah, we'll do a meet and greet afterwards. Yeah, right. it's a it's an album release party, so there'll be a hang afterwards. So yes, right, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, let's talk about your New York City uh, album release party, cutting room in New York City. What's what's going on there? And give us the date. That's going to be May seventh at the cutting room. Uh, and that's on thirty se East thirty second and fifth, thirty second and fifth, I believe. And yeah, the cutting room is great. You know, I've known the uh, the owners, um, the owner Steve Walter and um, Chris Noth. Okay. Chris Noth is the the actor Chris Noth. Right. And um, I I became friendly with them. I think it was uh, it's it's a few years ago now because this is my third album release party that I'm doing at the cutting room um, on May seventh and. Uh, I think Steve Walter and I became friendly because Steve found out that I was working with Annie Haslam from Renaissance. Oh yeah. Huge fan of Renaissance and Annie Haslam. Annie is also going to be joining us on another show because we have our the Pennsylvania album release party, which is uh May 25th at the Sellersville Theater. And she will oh, be okay. our special, she'll be our special guest there. But uh, the New York show is also full band. Um uh, again, Randy Driscoll as a special guest singer and the band that I mentioned before. And uh, that's a, like a seven o'clock show on the seventh for my seventh album. So seven, seven, seven. There um, you go. Hey, another Prince. That was his favorite number. Yes. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> number. It works for me. Right, right. And yeah, the what I love about the cutting room is, is their, their sound is great. They have a very solid... They're very solid um, a sound engineer and uh, good people. And it's it's spacious enough that it doesn't feel like you're crammed into a small New York club. You know, it's big. It has like a, like, I think it's like 200 or plus, something like that, that they can open it up to. So, and then we have, uh, there's a space afterwards where we can actually all just hang out. So oh, it's okay. going to be it's very, it's very laid back. And um, it's the type of place where you can really like hang out and meet people afterwards, you know, with a, so it's not like your, your traditional meet and greet after a show where there's a line and you sign the CD and you're, mm -hmm. you know, and then you go on, on your merry way, you know, you can actually hang out with people and walk around and have a drink and, and everyone's invited. So if you have a ticket to the show, you automatically have a ticket for the after party. That nice place. And uh, that is on May May 7th. May 7th. May 7th. And go to janclose.com to get all that information uh, for the dates. Of course, it's picking up. I'm sure you'll be touring all through the uh, upcoming summer as well. Do you, do you get into doing a lot of festivals or you, you prefer the, the solo gigs? I mean, just you you on the bill. Uh, you know, I, I, I like having the band, you know. Um, I do, but uh, I, I I like doing the solo gigs too, you know. So it it, it really depends. How, how about playing festivals? Do you do you get involved in that a lot with other bands? Yeah, I just played one. I just played a the the. It's I think it's the biggest in South Africa. It's called Splashy Fen. Oh. Okay. And uh, yeah, and I actually played it solo. Oh wow! And it yeah. was cool. You know, it was it totally it was a total vibe. It it totally worked, and uh, I mean. The attendance at the festival overall was, I think, five thousand. So it's not small. And and uh, and it started raining. Oh. <laughs> right, we were tented in. Right, it was a, oh, I mean, okay. The big tent, and um, but at the very end, it started pouring. Oh. And this is in the Drakensberg Mountains, which is 
very beautiful uh, in KwaZulu Natal area of South Africa, which is uh, east uh, south southeast ish um, of of South Africa near the Indian Ocean, and um, it started raining at the end. And I played Song to the Siren, which has sort of become a, a, a staple that I just kind of play in like almost every show, Tim Buckley song. And uh, it was just such a, it totally felt like there was a soundtrack, you know, the rain yeah. like gave us an extra layer. Perfect of, timing. It was cool. Yeah. So uh, how about the, the fans in the audience? Were they covered or just you? Yeah, no, everyone like start to get huddled in, you know. So oh, okay. It, it became quite tight and very right. gravel. Yeah, right. So, there, yeah. You know, one last, one last thing I wanted to touch on. I mean, this is not with the record, but you also, there are a couple of things, actually. The first thing I wanted to talk about is your music has been licensed in several different TV shows, movies. And what what's the process for you to um, get that out and be accepted like that? And how, you know... Do you do it often or? It, it, you know, not often enough. Yeah. <laughs> I have to do that like a lot more. Right. But it's a very competitive field, you know. Um, as we both know, the music business, it's all about who you know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how famous you are or in or not famous or infamous. Uh, you know, it really is. The, the music supervisors have a job to do. They have to find the song that fits the scene and fits the vibe. Right. You know, so you can never really take it personally if they don't choose you. But then if they do, it does feel very special. Like it does feel lucky. Mm -hmm. you know, it does feel like a stroke of luck. Um, oh. And not all artists are. Um, I mean, it didn't used to be. I mean, it used to be sort of frowned upon right. when you, uh, you know, but whereas now it's like the thing everybody. Yeah. Wants. It's a badge of honor, right? Yeah, so it 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 is. Uh, uh, I mean, I I wasn't I wasn't making music in in the eighties, you know, when when this was nineties and stuff. But but now it's um it's very competitive, so you really have to. Again, it goes back to developing relationships and being in the right place at the right time with people. Also, uh, a lot of musical theater you've done. I I just realized that that you were doing you were in a touring version of the Who's Tommy, right? Uh, like no, I wasn't in the tour. I was in the first uh, sit down that they did. Oh, um, okay. After the Broadway, there was a new production that Jeffrey Finn Productions put together that turned into a tour. And okay. I did the initial uh, performance of that, which was week long at New Jersey Performing Arts Center. It's like my first gig in New York. Right. And then it did go on tour. But, but by the time the show went on tour, I had already signed with Jekyll and Hyde and I did the the Broadway Jekyll and Hyde National. Oh, so okay. yeah, so I I couldn't do both unfortunately. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so I couldn't. Hey, but at least you were in demand. To I be was able working. To have that option. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. um I gotta thank you, Jan. This this has been great. I mean, Pleasure. We're, we're we're in the state of New York, both of us. I'm upstate and you're they, I guess they call it downstate. You're in the city. Where are you now? Uh, just outside Saratoga Springs. Saratoga Springs. Right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we'd love to see you up here. I'm sure your your people can check into it. It's a big art scene up here. We're we're just getting it. Yeah, let's do something. Yeah, we're just getting just into it. Her. Yeah. You know, we went to see a concert the other night. So, um, yeah, young close in in Saratoga County would be great. I would love that, man. I would love to come up there. Maybe we can right. let's let's set it up. Okay. Thanks, Jan. Surrender. And we mentioned, and you can watch it again. Uh, we mentioned all the upcoming uh, concerts, and he's going to be adding more. Janclose.com. Thanks, Jan. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Jan. Bye.